Shalom Aleichem Nala viewers. This is Rabbi Heshi Reichman with a Dvato on Pasha's Kisiso, taken from Shem Shmuel to discussion of Hasidus. And Ashir is dedicated to the memory of Rochaleh Bas Reb Chaim Tzvi Shalom. We'll be discussing today the sin of the Egel, the golden calf, which is perhaps the gravest sin in the history of the Jewish people. And certainly it had major consequences. At the time of the Ten Commandments, our Jewish forefathers were elevated to the level of Adam, of man before the sin of the tree of knowledge. Death was removed. They were like angels, except, of course, for this possibility of sinning with the golden calf. And it is a very puzzling, of course, difficult episode. And many of the commentaries spend a great deal of time discussing it, and I'm sure in some of your other now assure him they're going to the Ramban and other people's approaches to it. But one thing most of the commentaries say, including Rashi and Ramban and Kuzari, and that is that the sin of the golden calf, certainly for the vast majority of the Jewish people, was more of a sin of omission than commission. In other words, they, it was not that, God forbid, the masses of the Jewish people decided to abandon the Ten Commandments and violate the First and Second Commandment of not to have idols, not to create images. This is, doesn't, uh, this is incomprehensible. It's just not possible for us to assume such a thing. But rather, as Ramban points out and the other commentaries, the vast majority of the Jewish people felt that because Moshe had not returned after the 40 days, as he had promised, something had happened and he had died on, the, on top of the mountain. Of course, you know, it was a scary, frightening experience, the fires and the sounds and so on. And they thought maybe he died in that volcanic activity up there on top of Har Sinai. And they were alone in the desert. And it seems that Aaron, who was the fill-in for Moshe Rabbeinu, did not inspire the people's confidence that he could lead them through that desert. Now the desert was a frightening place. No water, no food. You're dealing with 600,000 men and an equal number of women and certainly an equal number of children couple of million people without real food and, and sustenance, just the daily man and the miraculous water, which everybody thought was the result of Moshe's, act, Moshe's activities, Moshe's genuine righteousness, his closeness to Hashem. But no one thought that Aaron could do it. And somehow, and this is still something which we don't fully understand and grasp, the idea of this golden calf came up and it was some kind of, of uh, inspiration. Ramban says it had something to do with the visions of, of God's throne, which they had been privy and had experienced at the time of giving of the Torah. Because we know from the Sefer of Yechezkel that in the throne of God there's, uh, there's the image of, of a calf. One of the images on that throne it represents a certain spiritual force, and, and this spiritual force uh, they, they felt that they could access through uh, d divinations and, and, and other types of, of uh, occult uh, things, and uh, this would get them through the desert. But they didn't deny the existence of God Almighty, and they didn't reject the Ten Commandments, but they rather thought that what they were doing was within the, the broad intent of the law. It may be not exactly the letter of the law. And maybe they thought that it was a question of pekuach nefesh, it was a question of life and death. And they had to do something to survive, and in life and death you can suspend the letter of Torah law. So, they came up with this idea of the golden calf. Now, it means that this was Avodah Zorah. According to the law of Torah, this was certainly idolatry. 
And Jews' idea of Hashem Echad, God is one, is a very pure idea. One without any cloning, without any uh, additions, without any modifications, a simple, simple, simple one. So therefore, any idea of giving this kind of spiritual power to an angelic image, which this would probably be, have been considered from God's throne, would have been some kind of an, an, an angelic form. So giving that kind of power to an angel is certainly against the idea of Hashem Achad, that God is simply one. Angels really have no powers of their own. And in terms of the Jews' relationship to God Almighty, we almost have no, no mention or, or relationship, certainly, certainly no any, any explicit relationship to angels and angelic forces.